Over the past few decades, manufacturing of electric vehicles has exponentially increased with their presence becoming commonplace in our lives. This has been largely attributed to improvements made towards their driving range, eco-friendly appeal and affordability. Today, it is nearly impossible to go to the streets without seeing one of the newer EV models on the road. An electric vehicle has an average lifespan of 8 to 10 years, which is defined by the point that the battery pack reaches roughly 80% of its original capacity, also known as its end of life. But have you ever wondered where the old batteries end up, and more importantly, what happens to them? While a small fraction of them are salvaged for immediate secondary application, the vast majority still ends up in landfills or warehouses where they are stored and await to be treated properly. This causes several problems that include fire hazard risks and release of harmful toxic gases or chemicals as the materials decay over time. So instead of accumulating mountains of spent batteries and kicking the can down the road, what if there was a way to put them to good use? To address this challenge, battery recycling has emerged as an ideal solution over the past couple of years and is rapidly becoming both an effective and economical means to deal with end-of-life batteries for EV manufacturers. But how exactly is a battery recycled? First, let's dissect a battery that would be found in a typical EV. It's usually fabricated at three levels, the pack, module, and cell level. At the cell level, you'll find battery components such as the cathode, anode, separator, current collectors, and electrolyte. All of these are contained within either a stainless steel cylindrical case, or a prismatic case, or a pouch depending on the manufacturer. The cathode materials are typically composed of nickel and cobalt rich transition metal oxides such as lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide, so called NMC, or lithium nickel cobalt aluminium oxide, so called NCA, and are paired up with a graphite anode electrode. They are separated by a polymer separator soaked in a lithium hexafluorophosphate based carbonate organic electrolyte. At the module level, a collection of cells is placed in both series or parallel and sized accordingly based on the capacity, current and voltage requirements of each application. Lastly, the modules are then grouped together to form a pack where they are integrated together with the battery management systems. In recycling, the goal is to extract as much as possible from all three levels. Currently, there are three common practices of battery recycling used today. Pyrometallurgy, hydrometallurgy, or direct recycling. In pyrometallurgy, the modules are deactivated disassembled and shredded to create powders of mixtures. Afterwards, the mixture is fed into a high temperature reactor at around 1500 degrees Celsius, where they are melted, producing products of metal alloys and slag containing the transition metals. The metals within the metal alloys are then chemically separated using acid treatment, typically using sulfuric acid and hydrogen peroxide to dissolve the metal ions out of a solid alloy to produce a mixture of ionic species in solution. These can be recovered by precipitation or solvent extraction and reacted with other recovered materials to produce new cathode materials for fresh batteries. The slag formed containing lithium or aluminum is not usually recycled and is instead directed to other non-battery applications such as cement forming. While the process is simple, it is also energy intensive which translates into high processing costs and carbon footprint. Moreover, harmful gases generated from the reaction processes are often difficult or costly to treat, making them less attractive for our environment. Hydrometallurgical processing is another alternative that reduces the energy cost involved. 
The process begins with a stabilization procedure where the batteries are discharged and exposed to inert environments to ensure cells are safe to dismantle and shred. During the shredding process, the battery components are granulated and are sent to a separation unit where magnets and filters are used to separate out current collector metals and plastics, leaving behind the transition metals and lithium. At the same time, the electrolyte is evaporated and recovered for future use. The transition metals and lithium are lightly calcined and then are treated with acid to separate the components. The main advantage to this process is that it avoids the use of high temperature reactors, keeping energy consumption costs down. However, it remains necessary to utilize extremely caustic agents such as hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and other potent acids, which are environmentally damaging and dangerous to handle. Additionally, hydrometallurgy is also found to have limited recovery efficiencies for batteries used in EVs due to the specific chemistries involved, making this process particularly problematic at large scales to recycle batteries that do not contain expensive metal elements such as lithium-ion phosphate batteries. The third process is direct recycling. Direct recycling is a relatively new technology currently being developed, but shows much promise to overcome the challenges faced in traditional pyrometallurgy and hydrometallurgy. Unlike the previous methods discussed, direct recycling avoids the breakdown of battery components down into the raw materials, and instead directly recovers and regenerates them into reusable forms without the use of any energy-intensive processes or toxic chemicals. It also generates much less waste and offers much higher material recovery efficiencies. This process utilizes the chemical process known as relithiation. This is done by introducing fresh lithium into the lithium-depleted cathodes harvested from spent batteries, restoring them back to their original state without breaking them down. In an example, NMC cathode materials are harvested from spent batteries and are loaded into an autoclave with lithium hydroxide solution for regeneration. After the process is complete, the product is then quickly annealed at a fixed temperature to improve the cathode crystallinity and reduce defects. The recycled battery materials using such methods were found to have similar or sometimes even better performance as compared to their fresh state. Many researchers around the world are currently working to develop such direct recycling methods for a variety of lithium-ion based batteries. Lithium along with other transition metals used in batteries are a limited finite resource. Their extensive mining in today's battery booming age also introduces many negative impacts that ultimately harm our environment. Global reserves of rare earth metals such as cobalt or nickel are also limited and tend to be concentrated in select parts of the world. Recycling is not only the right thing to do in terms of environmental sustainability, but also presents the battery industry with a multitude of economic benefits. It is exciting to know that we are in the midst of seeing a major eco-friendly transformation right before our eyes. We hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to battery recycling and stay tuned for future videos.